It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? Leave your body, Seymour. Leave your body. Left below. Ooh, a He is Risen production. Rapture? <laughs> Oh, Mr. Thompson, what if your wife finds out? It's modern times. Everyone's doing it. Where did my Christian limo driver go? My pious husband is missing. The baby I chose to have baptized is gone. Mr. Thompson, what's happening? It's the rapture, Shauna. The rapture. The virtuous have gone to heaven, and the rest of us have been... Left Below. <gasps> Left Below? Where have I heard that before? It's the title of the movie. <gasps> it's everywhere. We were fools. And because we rejected God, tacitly accepting Satan, we must suffer through the apocalypse. I thought all religions were a path to God. I was wrong. <laughs> Why did I choose to be gay? Oh, this movie will haunt me for the rest of my life. 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And we shall be changed, making it clear. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up to meet them in the clouds, meet the Lord in the air, and be with the Lord evermore. So this is not an event where he's coming back to the earth. The Bible plainly tells us somebody's not going to die. Then the Bible tells us we which are alive is going to meet the Lord in the air. That's clear as you can get it. Amen. It has nothing to do with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So any passage of scripture they use that pertains to anyone before Paul or anything pertaining to the second coming is to be discarded from this subject. Amen. Then the Bible tells us, and I'm going to read just, just a few scriptures here, more than I usually do, but uh, this will be important because what I want you to see is that 2, Corinthians, I mean, 2 Thessalonians 2, beginning with verse 1, going through verse 11, these passages of scripture clearly, clearly identify with Antichrist and him showing you the coming of the Antichrist. Watch how clear it is. Verse 1 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathered and gather unto him, that you soon not be shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word as from letter from us. People was forging letters and sending them out. From us, as in the day that the day of Christ is at hand, people were saying, sending that Jesus is fixed to come now. He's fixed to come. People were selling their houses and doing stupid stuff. And Paul was saying, don't believe any of this. It ain't coming from us. He said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. That man of sin. He's talking about the Antichrist. The son of perdition. Perdition means destruction, the son of destruction, the devil's boy, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, brothers and sisters, I quit school in the ninth grade. English was my worst class, but that's personal pronouns. You see what I'm talking about? The Antichrist ain't a system. All the personal pronouns given here. He, 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 him, him. Exalting his self. Showing himself he's greater than God. It's the Antichrist. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Something is withholding this man from coming. Something stopping him from coming. He is the father of darkness, the kingdom of darkness. You know what's preventing him from coming? The kingdom of light, the body of Christ. He can't come. Not if face three of us here. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That is, the workings of Antichrist already works. They're building this kingdom for him. It's a one world order. It's a one world kingdom. They're building it for him. They're going to build the kingdom and then they're going to put him in charge of it. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let till he be taken out of the way. Now, please make a note of this. The word letteth 
Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The word letteth in that passage of scripture is an old English word. The word means hindereth. Only he who now hindereth will hinder until he be taken out of the way. Who's got, who's got to be taken out of the way? The one that he said ain't going to die. The we of which he said was going to be caught up has to be taken away. And then it says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. See, the brothers and sisters, this is very, very clear. Somebody's not going to die. Paul made it clear it's the church. We will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. The Bible makes it clear Antichrist is going to come, but he can't come until something is removed. What is it going to be removed? That that was caught up, that that was promised in the mystery revealed, shall never die. And then, that means it follows the event. What follows the event of the church being caught up, taken out, is the revealing of Antichrist. The revealing of Antichrist begins the next age, the age of tribulation, seven years long. Amen? I mean, this really ain't complicated, brothers and sisters. But the devil wants to make it complicated, wants, wants to confuse the body of Christ. Amen? Then the Bible says uh, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 4, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet. There's that trumpet again. Talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee the things that come hereafter. Come up hither. This is Revelation chapter 4. Now, if we do us a good study of the Bible, you will know Revelation chapter 4 follows Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 follows Revelation chapter 2. What did Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3 talk about? The churches. Okay? It was the whole lifespan of the church, the church age, from beginning to end. That ends in Revelation chapter 3, and Revelation chapter 4 begins with John saying, I hear something sound like a voice of a trumpet, and a voice saying, Come up hither! And a door was opened. All right, now, from this moment on, from that verse on, the church is never mentioned again. Okay? Never mentioned again. The church is mentioned more than 300 times in the Bible. All through the book of Revelation up to this point, and the moment he hits this point, and he says, I saw a door in heaven open, a voice like a trumpet say, come up hither. All of a sudden, the church is never found again. What is the only logical conclusion? We're the body of Christ. If we was in the world, would we not be preaching against Antichrist? We would be the very foundational principles which God would use to teach his word, his body. The church is not mentioned because the church ain't there. And so he anoints 144,000 from the natural tribe of Israel to preach. So we see clearly. A mystery means nobody knew it before Paul. We will not all die. A mystery revealed. We which are alive and remain should be caught up, snatched out to meet the Lord in the air. Now, let's go to another point. The word caught up or caught away. Now, the people who refute the rapture of the church by using other passages of Scripture to do it never argues this point because they can't. The term caught away and caught up is used several times in the Bible. Not one time is that phrase used that somebody living did not physically leave this planet. You remember Enoch left the planet. Never did die. Y'all remember Elijah? Left the planet. Never did die. Remember Jesus when he was on the mount and they looked and they saw him and the Bible says he was caught away into the heavens? He was literally snatched out. Same identical word. Remember the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11? They was caught up. The Bible said a door opened for them in heaven and they was caught up and everybody saw him leave. None of those passages of scriptures are refuted by the people that refute the rapture of the church. 
saying that it's some kind of pie in the sky nonsense that Christians want to escape persecution. Ain't no Christian trying to escape persecution. We're the only ones being persecuted. It's our heads being cut off all around this world. We're the only ones you can mock and blaspheme on a television right now. We're the only ones you can let a bar stay open and they want to shut the church down. We're the ones that's being attacked. Down in Canada, up in Canada, right now, if you read a passage of scripture from the Old Testament that says when two men lie together as a man lieth with a woman, they have committed an abomination before God, they can find you and put you in jail. But the Muslims that runs around up there were written in their creed that will cut your homosexual head off. Ain't nothing happens to them. Christians aren't trying to escape persecution. We're the only ones that ever been persecuted. The Bible tells us we're going to be called away because it's the end of the age and it's time for the tribulation period to come in. And every time that that term, with zero exceptions, every time the phrase is used, caught up or caught away, somebody physically left this planet alive and nobody refutes it. So then why would it only be the one time it's used pertaining to the church that it's refuted? It happened with Enoch. We're not contesting that. It happened with Elijah, we're not contesting that. It happened with the two witnesses, we're not contesting that. It happened with Jesus, we're not contesting that. But it can't be when if it says, we the church shall be caught up. You see, that's illogical. It doesn't make sense. Amen. The Bible then tells us, I saw a door in heaven open. Then the Bible tells us in... 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9. Again, let, let's, let's go ahead and read these verses. But of the times and the seasons, brother, and this is beginning with verse 1, uh, Thessalonians 5. But of the times and the seasons, brother, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Everybody say thief in the night. All right, now listen, brothers and sisters. There's an event being told us that's fairly clear, very clear. At some moment, nobody knows when, there's going to be the sound of a voice of a trumpet, and we're going to be called out of here. We don't know when it's going to happen. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. Somebody's going to just wake up tomorrow, and there's going to be a whole bunch of people gone. They're going to have one thing in common. They were all Bible people. Gone. There's another event that says that the Lord shall return from the east. The Bible specifically says, every eye shall see him. Now the Bible says that this day that's being spoke of here by Paul as he's talking about the catching away of the church and all that, said it would come as a thief in the night. Now if the Lord wants to play himself as part of a thief, don't you think he'd be a good one? Now there's a difference between a robber and a thief. A robber will go into your business, pull your gun out, hold the gun on you, and tell you, give me your money. But a thief is a different story. A thief's business is he don't want you to know he got what he got till he's gone, and you wake up tomorrow and find it ain't there. Now, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ cannot be referred to as a thief in the night when every eye sees him come. But there is another event that does make him as a thief in the night, the hour we know not that we shall in a moment in the twinkling of an eye be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and shall have changed and be with him forever. That's as a thief in the night. All right. Now the Bible says, uh, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, I have no need that I write unto you for you yourselves know that the Lord's coming and that day will be as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them all as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Who's he talking to? The church. Ye, brethren, you're not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Let us be sober and watch. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Okay? There is the wrath of man in the world. 
There is the wrath of the devil in the world. We certainly have received wrath from men. We've certainly received wrath from the devil. But the Bible says this we and us again. You know, the same we and us that ain't going to die. The same we and us is going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. This same we and this same us, the Bible says, is not appointed to the wrath of God. The Bible then tells us in the book of Revelation, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 6 and verse 16, it said, And then said unto the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. It says in Revelation 14, 10, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. More than ten times in the book of Revelation, the tribulation period from Revelation 6 to Revelation 20, more than ten times it says, This is the wrath of of God Almighty and the Lamb. Now you know why in verse 4, chapter 4, when a door was opened in heaven and a voice said, come up hither, that sounded like a trumpet. Now you know why the church is not there. Because it's not appointed to his wrath. Why would we be? We're not talking about backsliders who was there and got out of it. We're talking about the church, the body of Christ. What are we? We are the body of Christ, is that correct? If I am a born again believer and Christian in God, if you are, are you the body of Christ? You know what that means? It means you've already been dead, you've already been judged, and God no longer sees you. When you walk before Him on judgment day, He sees Jesus because you are in His body. You are not judged. That's why nothing that the devil brings up against us as the accuser of the brother will ever work. God don't even know what you're talking about. Because you are the body of Jesus Christ. The Bible says Jesus has been smitten once for the sins of the world. Moses lost his entrance into the promised land because he smote that rock the second time. And the Bible said that rock that followed them was Christ. He broke the word. He smote the rock the second time. The Bible said God, the Lord Jesus, is smitten once for the sins of this world. If we would be smitten by the wrath of God for sins of this world, we being the body of Christ, would be Christ being smitten the second time it can't happen. The Bible makes it clear, brothers and sisters, and I'll close. The Bible makes it clear, a mystery. Nobody had it before Paul, so no scripture before Paul can be used. We will not all die. We will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. We are not appointed unto his wrath.